So welcome back to the channel guys. It's been an eventful couple of weeks to say the least here in Sydney, but today we have some good news. We have a good news story. Today I want to introduce you to the bike you saw in the intro, the bike that you can see behind me, no doubt including a rather large amount of very pornographic b-roll of said bike. But I want to make this video a lot more than that. The last 18 months has been an incredible period for the bike industry. Huge demand and this lack of supply that we're all seeing. We've almost had a backseat ride to all this. And along the way, we have learnt some incredible facts about what's really going on in the industry. So what I want to do is we'll tell you the story of the Nero Continental 2021 Deville A01 in all its intrigue. All right, let's get into it. Tell you what, it's a nice looking bike, isn't it? All right, so what are we talking about? It is the Devel A01 rim brake version, which is essentially a very, very similar frame to what I reviewed last year. It's what the bike guys were riding last year. I will obviously link the videos that I did talking about the specific performance of the bike below for anyone who's really keen to get into the, well, the performance on-road side of this bike. But in short, we're still dealing with the Japanese Torre T1000 carbon, a really high grade carbon. That carbon is laid up using EPS technology. Now, the EPS technology basically means that the carbon appears smooth on the inside and the outside of the frame. It's a real expensive value add. The final feature of the frame that I want to highlight is this is Devel's own monocoque mold designed from the ground up. It's not a shared mold. It's not an open mold, it's their own mold. So this is where things start to get interesting. Why their own mold? Well, the first thing is obviously it gives you far more design freedom. You, you are designing a bike from the ground up, which is very much the passion of Paul who's involved in this. The second is when you know you're dealing with high grade carbon, you can design a mold accordingly. So you can push the boundaries a little bit more because you are using a higher grade carbon. And the third reason, you own your mold. It's almost like an intellectual property. So I'm gonna go on a little tangent now, but remember that, Devel own their mold. So approximately 97% of all carbon bike manufacturing comes out of China. Big brands, little brands, brands you've never heard of, brands that win the Tour de France. But what you haven't heard of is the amount of mold sharing that goes on. This particular frame is a monocoque frame. So essentially that means the whole frame is one mold. That's not the case with most bikes. There are a few out there. Cipollini, I do know, is one of them. But most share molds of parts because just like the motor industry, you're seeing parts of bikes built using a mold of a brand and shared with another brand. And you're probably asking, well, if everyone's just using the same stuff, why don't the bikes all just look the same? Well, you gotta remember that the bikes are made of different parts. So whilst certain brand might use the forks of, of another brand and a seat stay of another brand, it's not all going to look like the same thing. The other thing is that brands can lay them up differently. So just like I talked about that EPS technology that, that Devel do, Many brands don't do that. So you can have a thinner tubing, which will obviously therefore be a lighter tubing, but with different characteristics. So whilst I'm here telling you that, you know, brands are sharing a lot of the same stuff, it doesn't necessarily look or feel that way. So let's take this then back to the COVID delays that we, we saw. All right, so now that we've got in our heads that we're all sharing different parts and bits and pieces, Let's go into a scenario where the workforces of factories are reduced down to 25% capacity. Put on top of that, that you're staggering delays across different countries because carbon might come from, from Japan, paint might come from Taiwan. You're staggering this across different restrictions. Lead times blow up completely. So whilst the brand might be in a position to make 200,000 seats days, the brand that's making the 200,000 forks is not in that position and the lead time just goes out and out and out. So in the beginning, I said that this was Devel's 
own mold. They owned the intellectual property to this mold. They also owned quite a bit of raw materials. And you've probably heard people talk about this on some of the different channels on YouTube, saying that there's been a shortage of raw materials for the bike industry's production. And that is true. Develle was in a really good position, however. They had raw materials and they had their own mold that they owned. There's a better way to capitalize on the demand for bikes than sell to customers. It's sell to big brands. What am I alluding to? You can probably read between the lines that maybe some similarities in this bike that you might have seen in some big brands that are coming out. I think that's a massive kudos to them. This paint job is quite simply the best paint job I've ever seen on a bike. I always find with, with white that when it has that pearly glisten to it, you've achieved godlike status as far as paint jobs go. This has that. No photo, no video I can shoot. I don't have the skills, the color grading to pull this off. Just how good it is. You're just going to have to see it for yourself at a race that might one day happen. As far as actually getting your hands on this frame, I know people in Australia are particularly frustrated by this, but unfortunately guys, just put your headphones in for a minute and listen to something else. For everyone else, for about the 37% of you who have access to the bike in the Philippines, Indonesia, in Japan, I'll put some links below to some of the distributors there. The best resource for most of you is still the Devel Facebook page. Right, you've managed to get this far into the video, you get the good grade A bubble chat. It does not get better than this. So 95% of global production is designed in China. Now, this will sort of feed into another one of the COVID delays that occurred, but the, the way the routine normally plays out is the big brands. And when I say big brands, I mean every big brand that has a production house in China or uses production in China goes to the Chong bike show. I'm really sorry, I've destroyed that. I will put the name there, I'm really sorry. At that bike show, they meet with Chinese designers, freelance Chinese designers who have an ingrained knowledge into the production process there. Really good designs, I can't stress that enough. And the brands essentially buy the designs off those designers. Now, sure, they'll go away and they'll make some changes to them, some aesthetic changes to them, but at the end of the day, it is very much the designs of, I know them, those designers. That meeting hasn't happened for two years. Delays. Lack of development. That's what's happening. And the last thing I want to talk about is, and this is again comes to some of the delays and specifically why you're seeing delays with big brands. And that is the big brands don't pay on time. They have big production runs. Perfect example is a brand beginning with B pays eight months after production. So for a production house to, to already be dealing with huge lead times and not get, get then get paid eight months after the fact is not really feasible. And it's where you're seeing smaller brands being able to step into that mold because they're not given the same credit space. They almost don't have the credit to do that so they're able to stay on top of it with the factories. I know it's very much a YouTube thing at the moment to go get a sort of cheap Asian brand and test it out against big brands and all that kind of stuff. But I just wanna talk specifically about Devel. It's not that. Well, whatever. But so Devel is short for development project. Essentially, this is a, this is a program that Paul has put together where the profits go back into grassroots cycling in the Philippines. That is why he's doing this. You know, and we're very proud to be involved in that and we take that responsibility very seriously. But more than that, like it's it's given us an opportunity to set 10, 12 guys up on frames, on, on bikes and be able to race them. That doesn't happen without guys like Paul stepping in and, and being involved. So there it is, the story of the Neurocontinental 2021 Devel A01 frame with all its bike industry, cycling industry, bubble chat along with it. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Please do give this video the thumbs up. It really helps the channel out. 
by that I mean for these to continue, prospective sponsors and all that kind of stuff look at likes and they look at subscribers. They don't look at views. So this is something that I really I love doing. I love being a part of this, but obviously the more help we get, it makes it so much easier. So do do those things. I think there's only about 33% of people who watch this who are actually subscribed. So it would make a big difference if you do hit the subscribe button. I've tried to keep this as positive and uh, not locked downy as, uh, as I could. But yeah, guys, I don't know what's happening. Um, I don't know what's happening. I live in Sydney, for those of you who are watching this going, what's he going on about? I live in Sydney, we're in lockdown. So yeah, anyway, it is what it is. Thank you so much for watching. We'll talk to you soon. I can't believe I just said it is what it is. It's such a 2020 thing to say. Oh dear, bike looks sick though, doesn't it?